everyone. I'm James Milad. Welcome to this edition of Talk of the Town. And, you know, on this series, every once in a while, I get a peculiar kind of uh, pleasure, and that's the case today, because I am talking to our town's recycling coordinator today, and she also happens to be my wife. So Charlotte Milan, uh, town recycling coordinator, first of all, thank you, Charlotte, for joining us today. Glad to be here. We appreciate it. Um, we wanted to get a, uh, a sense of what's been going on with our recycling program from your perspective um, through the pandemic and then talk about some specific attributes in uh, our recycling services. And then we'll ask you about some shorter or longer term plans near the end of, of the conversation. So that's the roadmap. Um, and if we can get started by just talking, obviously front and center for everybody are things that um, you've had to change or that we have had to change uh, because of the pandemic. So let's start there. Okay. Well, first of all, um, as an essential service, your waste, uh, uh, trash recycling and yard waste service at home has not been interrupted at all. And we're very pleased about that. Some other communities in Massachusetts had to um, delay uh, pickup at the beginning of the uh, virus in, in the spring um, of, of yard waste. We haven't had any setbacks at all. So we're really happy about that. But unfortunately with the town offices closed, that means that public works uh, customer service is also closed. And that's tough because we really like seeing the public come in, um, be able to offer information in person and give people um, various pieces of equipment. We sell compost bins, for example, um, so we've had to figure out ways around the fact that our offices are not open, but we're available through email and on the phone um, as we normally would be. I, I know that people have received various uh, pieces of information in the mail um, from the Department of Public Works related to recycling services recent, in recent months. Um, I think part of that, or they are all part of a program recycling ID. Can you... Uh, I, I'm, <laughs> Recycling IQ, excuse me. Can you um, can you just explain what that is and and um, and kind of describe the program for us? Sure. Well, Recycling IQ is, stands for Recycling Improved Quality, and it is a Mass Department of Environmental Protection um, outreach and education program that goes along with trying to make recycling simpler and easier to understand across the Commonwealth. And we're very excited to be running this program. Um, dozens of communities across the Commonwealth have already done this program. So we've learned a lot from who, whoever went before us. And um, we're fortunate to have a, a, a good sum of money to be able to hire recycling inspectors. And uh, those folks um, have been coming to the curb. We are looking at over 4,000 households on a weekly basis. And they're literally going through your recycling and checking out what mistakes might be being made at the curb. And in some ways, because of uh, the virus, because of COVID, it's people are home more. They're doing a lot of their recycling at home as opposed to the office or at school. And so we're seeing really good examples of all the different kinds of mistakes that people make. It's very understandable. And we're really trying to give very specific feedback. This is a oops tag. And this is what the inspectors are carrying with them to be able to make a, a note down here if they want to um, check off a particular mistake that these are the most common mistakes that people make. And um, I have to say another aspect of the virus is that people are having, taking uh, eating more takeout. And so we're having to address a lot of takeout containers as to whether they're recycling or trash. So uh, that's another COVID uh, result. I'm curious, is this part of a kind of uniformization that's happening in communities around the state? Everybody, again, uh, you were saying that you, you're trying to, that part of the goal here is to simplify things, to make things easier for everybody to understand and therefore comply with. Um, is this uh, basically, are we now kind of conforming to state requirements in a way that we were just kind of operating as, as a single community before? 
the Commonwealth uh, Mass Department of Environmental Protection got together actually with all of the sorting facilities that sort of the recyclables in Massachusetts and they developed a program called Recycle Smart MA. And this postcard that we sent um, residents includes the graphics of that program. And it comes along with a search tool that we have on the town's website. And also you can go to recyclesmartma.org and use the search tool there. And this is very much part of a concerted effort on the part of the state to make recycling simpler to understand. So many communities are signing on to this program. We signed on about a year and a half ago and it did create some new um, parameters about our recycling. But we didn't work really, really hard to get those new rules out to everybody. Uh, we tried to get out the most important changes um, and then other ones followed later. And it's a lot of information to take in. And so we, we the, really the simplest way to think about it is that there are really only four categories of materials that can be recycled and everything else probably can't be recycled. And that's a hard pill for people to swallow because um, before this, we've often encouraged people to recycle as much as possible. And that has led to some um, contamination in our recycling that we now need to correct. From what I understand, um, the inspectors that you were referring to before that are part of the Recycling IQ program um, are still in the process of gathering information. Um, and giving people feedback on, on mistakes that they're making, as you were saying. Um, but I'm curious whether um, so far, if you, if you can speak to this at all, whether um, what you're finding, the data that these guys are uncovering in this way is kind of conforms to what you already understood about the most common kinds of mistakes that people have been making in Arlington, the prevalence of that kind of thing, et cetera, or whether there have been surprises um, because you're now actually going through in a very detailed way and looking at what people are doing with their recycling. Mm. Yes, well, we are tracking how many people are putting plastic bags and soft plastic in their recycling, how many people are putting other kinds of material that we don't wanna see in the recycling. But generally, I have to say, I have been surprised. I really didn't think that so many people were putting materials in their recycling that they're not supposed to. So. That's been hard for me, I have to say. Um, I think that most of what people put in their recycling is fine. But if each of the 20,000 households in Arlington puts a plastic bag or a styrofoam meat tray in their recycling that doesn't belong there, that's 20,000 pieces of contamination in every, uh, every week. And that times all the other communities that are doing the same, it adds up to a lot of contamination. And um, that's why these programs are really important, this kind of support from the state to be able to have this door-to-door -door inspection is really uncovering um, the, the harsh reality that there's still a lot for us to learn out there. And you were saying that, you know, this is really um, bringing into high relief a general concern that you've had for a long time about contamination in that recycling stream. One thing that I was struck by in seeing one of the flyers um, was something that kind of works the other way. In other words, I saw that you can, with pizza boxes, for instance, it is, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to put this, whether it's now permissible when it wasn't before, but anyway, it seems okay for there to be some, uh, you know, kind of food scraps or, or bits of cheese or whatever on the, on, on the, on the boxes. How, how should people be treating, you know, uh, boxes and containers with little bits of, of food? Or, or, or is that fine to put in the recycling? Well, we actually want the containers to be very clean. Um, they don't have to be scrubbed clean, but uh, if it was a plastic container that was really mucky with peanut butter, for example, I would suggest people just throw that away if they don't want to clean it out. But we have to think of our materials that we recycle or that we place in the recycling bin as something that's going to be purchased and bought uh, to and made into something new. So it, we need it to be pretty clean. As far as pizza boxes, I know that's a big change for people. Um, 
the reason that we can now recycle pizza boxes and it's not pizza boxes with little pieces of cheese it's pizza boxes with grease the grease is okay okay but if it has a slice of pizza in it it's not okay if it was a triple cheesy pizza please don't put that triple cheesy mess in the recycling but if it's just a little bit of grease at the bottom that's no problem and the reason that we know that now is because again of this recycle smart program the Mass DEP went to all of the sorting facilities in Massachusetts and checked in with them and found out with them uh, what is marketable, what they can sell, what is being purchased and remanufactured. And it turns out that a little bit of grease on the, our pizza boxes is just fine. Let me share my screen and show you what our recycling looks like. So here's what our recycling looks like during a visit that um, some uh, Public Works employees went uh, to the sorting facility. This is called Greenworks, and this is where our recycling is sorted. And for the most part, you can see a lot of cardboard, um, so maybe some plastic containers. But what we see when we go um, up closer is a lot of soft plastics, a lot of plastic bags, um, bubble wrap, and um, soft packaging like that. And that's really not okay. And that plastic, soft plastic is really the primary thing that the Recycling IQ program from the state's point of view is concerned about removing from our curbside recycling. We really wanna get those soft plastics, plastic grocery bags, air pillows, all that packaging that we're also receiving because of the virus at home, uh, all that soft plastic packaging we need to keep out of our curbside recycling. Well, thank you very much for that thorough description of what is happening at the curbside. And it is, as you've already alluded to, very important right now because people are spending so much more time at home and going through so many more materials at home and then needing to dispense with those materials in a responsible way. So very good, I think. Um, but obviously that only deals with one part of the recycling services here in Arlington. Uh, something that I know over the years has been very popular are people's ability to drop off all kinds of stuff that don't get, doesn't get picked up at the curb. Um, so tell us uh, what the story is currently with drop-off activities uh, in the recycling realm here in Arlington. Yeah, so with our offices uh, not open to the public in person, we are arranging by appointment um, drop-off opportunities. So electronic waste is a typical thing that people want to drop off. Um, the only electronic waste that we are all required to not put in our trash are things with screens. So televisions and monitors and laptops. Everything else really could go in the trash, but a lot of people are very concerned about their privacy, um, their electronic privacy. So we also want to be able to offer a collection of um, computer hard drives. And so we have a quite an extensive electronic drop-off program where we accept um, stereo equipment and um, small appliances like toasters or irons or curling irons or blenders. And these um, are now by appointment and um, you go to arlingtonma.gov slash recycle. And this fall we have ongoing appointments that people can sign up for. All the usual fees apply. So there's still fees for televisions and monitors and laptops, but everything else is free. Um, so let me also tell you about our other drop-off uh, that's popular, which is the Recycling Center. That's a once a month activity. We did have to pause that for a few months this spring, but we're back on. And unless there's snow, we're able to offer the Recycling Center, but definitely during the winter months, um, we'll have to keep, keep an eye on the weather and see how it goes. And when, just remind us, when does the Recycle Center take place? And are you taking the same kinds of things in all the time? Or do, do, do those dates, does what you can drop off vary for different months, et cetera? Well, for these, um, the rest of the, of the winter uh, it will have just the basics. So um, you can go to arlingtonma.gov slash recycle and look for the Recycling Center page in the left-hand navigation. And that will explain all the different things that we take every month, which include scrap metal, very popular, and bulky rigid plastic, like big play equipment or five gallon buckets or larger things like that. Um, from time to time, we have Medical Sharp drop off, which is also very popular. That will be happening in November and February this winter. 
Um, otherwise, we keep most of the other kinds of special collections to the spring and the fall. So those have passed now and uh, look for those again in May. And I know that it, it, it traditionally happens on a Saturday, right? And is that always like the first or second Saturday or does it vary? No, we stay away from three-day weekends. It might be a Saturday or it might be a Sunday. We've introduced a couple of Sundays instead for people. Okay, so people should just check out the website where you had, have already pointed them and to get the latest information about the schedule. Yeah, and we're being very COVID safe. We've got um, uh, fewer people. It's all by registration. So um, we have under 200 people uh, attending and it's a four hour event now. So when you sign up and come, there are only 25 other people who are gonna be attending the event. It's always outdoors, always in the fresh air, come rain or shine. And um, our volunteers are very well trained to help you. So you don't have to uh, get too close to anybody. And um, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great option for people who are spending extra time at home cleaning out their basements and garages to be able to bring their, their items to us. So we really don't wanna to have to close that down. But of course, if, if the state um, or town regulations change at all, this is another kind of event that might have to uh, be postponed. So be on the lookout for that in, in the town notices. You know, another program that, uh, at least anecdotally from my observation, um, seems to be exploding in popularity over the last couple of years uh, is food scrap diversion, composting that happens also seemingly curbside and drop off. So tell us about that. Yeah, the, the curbside collection is very popular. Uh, we um, have been selling compost bins at a discount to residents for many, many years, and that actually continues to be very popular. But more and more people um, want to do the food scrap diversion, but they don't want to do the backyard composting piece of it because it, it does take quite a bit of attention. So food scrap um, uh, pickup at the curb has a cost to it. It's a subscription. There are four companies that are offering their services in Arlington. So we've got those all laid out on the town's website. So you can visit each one um, online and see which one works for you. Um, we did send out postcards. Um, have you been wanting to compost? So uh, this is the, a little illustration of the cart that many of the companies use to, uh, they give you the cart, um, oftentimes they sell it to you. So what the town has done to promote these programs is that we will give you this little cart and we'll also give you a sink side uh, container to collect your food scraps in. And that's a, considered a, a food scrap diversion kit. And it's, it's our way of thanking the public for being willing to sign up for a subscription service. When we originally got going with this, there were you know maybe about a thousand households that had already signed up just word of mouth. It was amazing. So our goal in really investing in this program and starting to offer these kits was to double that, to get to 2000. We're really largely there. We've given away another, I would say 700 kits um, in the last um, uh, 10 months, 12 months. And we have about 300 more left. We'd really like to get those given away. So we hope that people listening will consider um, this, the food scrap diversion that way. But for those who aren't quite sure it's the right thing for them yet, or they don't really want to commit to a year long or six month long subscription service, we do have a uh, free drop-off program. We just ask that people re register for it and really follow the vegetarian rules about the drop-off program. So we can um, give everybody the, the URL for that. Mm -hmm. And where it, it, does the drop off happen in different at different sites around town? Just one? Where is we have that? Two locations right now at the skating rink, actually, right along the bike path, and at Public Works at Fifty One Grove Street. But we do ask people to learn a little bit about it first, um, and uh, so that we can reach you in case we have to close it for snow or any other emergency event. Um, and, you know, yet that's clearly yet another aspect of uh, the town's recycling services that must be even more kind of valuable or well used now uh, because people are spending so much more time at home, cooking more, eating, you know, like, as you said, ordering takeout more, et cetera. But nonetheless, uh, I imagine that food scraps uh, have risen um, in, at, at people's residences. Um, yes, so but, they, but they've also, we believe, 
are strongly contributing to a reduction in the weight of our trash, which is really exciting to see really the ultimate goal. Um, but it's also very exciting to see some early signs of that in the tonnage data. Great. Um, we are speaking in early November, and that means we are right in the middle of or, or approaching, uh, you know, the leaves, well, the leaves are coming off for sure, and they will continue to do so. So um, leaf season brings its own um, particular, uh, you know, schedule of services. Um, tell us about that, please. Sure. Well, we have weekly leaf collection, um, yard waste collection through the first full week of December. So the 7th to the 11th, I believe. Um, whatever your trash and recycling day that week, that's your last week of leaf collection. And yeah, leaves get, get pretty heavy this time of year. So we need people to not make their bags too, too heavy. Um, we also need everyone to be really vigilant if it's gonna snow to pull your bags off the curb and allow for the plows to have access. That's one reason why we stop leaf collection when we do, because tipped over bags of leaves on a street that needs to be plowed creates a big mess and even some dangerous situations. So we, we um, appreciate the public's cooperation with that. Um, last thing you'll be happy to hear. Uh, let me just ask you to outline any, um, it, what, whatever you can share uh, with our audience around both short and longer term plans um, that people can anticipate coming out of our Department of Public Works and your office, the recycling? Well, uh, in the short term, I would say that we really would like to figure out how to have some of our reuse and repair activities resume um, with, um, with COVID in place. Um, it's, it's been challenging. People love the, um, the fix-it clinics those are available virtually and we'll try and uh, get more information out to the public about those so that people can get back in the habit of trying to repair their items. Um, we just received our annual um, uh, grant from MassDEP that rewards us for the recycling and diversion activities that we already do with grant funding that must be earmarked for additional waste diversion programming. So that's pretty exciting. Every time we get that money, we can put our heads together uh, with input from Public Works and Zero Waste Committee, uh, Zero Waste Arlington. You know, what, what are the goals now? What should we be investing in? Um, some of the things that we have to keep in mind right now about investment are the fact that the DPW will be under renovation at some point. Um, in the not too distant future. So we need to possibly, you know, figure out how to hold the recycling center events during that time or pause for a short amount of time, we're not sure yet. And then um, we have another contract, another waste contract uh, coming up um, in, a, in a, about a couple of years. So I know that seems like it's far away to the public, but to me, it feels really, really close. And we want to create the best possible program for the town for the years to come. So that's what, um, those are our future plans that we spend a lot of time thinking about. Are there standard uh, kind of arrangements in terms of time made with, with the, uh, the companies you contract with? Um, in other words, are you, you're saying it's coming up in a couple of years. Is that going to uh, be something that then runs for five years, 10 years, or is there no set time frame? Um, there's no set time frame, and I would say that um, in terms of um, what's common, it can be as short as three years. Five years is pretty typical. Um, this last contract was 10 years, and that was pretty unusual. It ended up serving us really well. Uh, we, were, we have been very insulated as a community from the ups and downs of the recycling market because of that long-term contract. Um, but going forward, we'll have a lot of um, good advice and a lot of uh, good thinkers helping us design a contract and uh, a program that will be very forward thinking and um, I don't know. I don't know if another 10 year contract is even a, a possibility out there these days. I think that with all the uncertainty in um, markets, I think that probably something shorter is, is uh, more, more typical. Well, I personally can't imagine uh, this conversation having been any more expansive and comprehensive than it is. And I imagine uh, there are those in our audience who might feel like, oh my God, <laughs> I had no idea that, you, we, that so much could be said about our recycling programs. 
but let me ask you before we go, whether there is anything else that, uh, that you would like to make sure people know um, and that we haven't covered. Well, um, I, I just, I think I take this opportunity to um, thank the public for their patience during this time of, um, of uh, stress at home yet here the, the town is coming to you and saying, well, but could you also make a couple of changes in your recycling habits? Um, we know that that's asking the public um, to pay attention to something that, you know, maybe some people don't really <laughs> have the energy to pay attention to right now. Um, but uh, the, we'd really like to make everything simpler and we're really working towards that. And the packaging industry, the food production industry is really working against us in that way. Um, inventors, uh, material scientists, all kinds of exciting things are going on in the food packaging world, but that makes recycling really complex. And so bear with us, we'll try to get you the information out as we can. Um, but when you get some funky new interesting packaged food item, just be really glad it looks really cool and it works really well to keep that food safe, but know that it might mean that that packaging is not recyclable. And if you're not sure, check in with me and I will let you know. Well, Arlington, as we know, is a community that highly values the work that you do, um, both the, the logistics of it and the values that underlie it. So, um, you know, I think on behalf of the community, we would also like to thank you and the Department of Public Works for continuing to push forward um, with this important work. So I have been speaking with Charlotte Milan, who is our town's recycling coordinator. Um, I'm James Milan, and this is Talk of the Town. Appreciate your being here, Charlotte. And we also appreciate you being here uh, to watch. We will see you next time.